Imagine this. You are involved with Acme Corp, who have implemented ServiceNow products very successfully over the past year. Now they want to strengthen that success by creating more transparency for the entire organization. You probably guessed it right. The next milestone in the roadmap, ServiceNow Discovery. And you have been tasked to investigate the implementation strategy. Planning for ServiceNow Discovery can be a challenging task, unless you know how. That is why today we are having a look at the various considerations when planning for success. I always like to start with a slight refresh. You may have seen our previous video where we discussed the values and benefits of ServiceNow Discovery. Link in the description. If you haven't, let me quickly reiterate why companies and public administrations invest their time and money into ServiceNow Discovery. There are basically two main reasons. The first reason, you want insights into your IT infrastructure. You want to accurately track every device that your organization operates. Keep the scale in mind. We are speaking of potentially thousands of devices from on-premise servers and data centers to virtual machines in various public clouds or simple end-user workstations. With Discovery, you have better data quality simply because automation by its very nature brings standardization and consolidation. Plus, it's easier to manage and scale. The second reason, you want that operational data be kept up to date in the most efficient way. So what better way than to automate this, right? Discovery allows for better overall awareness of operations, hence leading to reduced risk and reduced cost. You are convinced? Good. So where to get started? What do we need to consider before heading for Discovery? To address the strategy, let us split the discussion up into three pillars. People, process and technology. Whatever project we are working on, we always need to consider everyone involved. Management and project sponsors, developers and administrators, supporting subject matter experts and end users, maybe also vendors and your customers. Establishing an effective communication strategy is your greatest tool to keep everyone involved well informed and, if necessary, on their toes. Keep in mind, ServiceNow Discovery is not a small point product solution. In most cases, it is far-reaching, spanning across multiple departments within the organization and often requiring access to all parts of the network. Do not underestimate implementations that need to cover multiple geographical locations. Working together is the ultimate key for success. Fortunately, most ServiceNow customers are well aware of this and they have the necessary governance. However, if this is not the case, then the next pillar should certainly help you. At this point, I also would like to mention that ServiceNow's implementation partners have access to the Now Create framework, featuring the necessary outlines for a good communication approach in a project like this. Processes are the routines that drive your productivity and thus your business. Nowadays, there are plenty of standardized processes. ServiceNow Discovery is not a process per se, but it typically builds on top of the ITIL configuration management process. If you are not aware, the scope of configuration management is the governance of all configuration items and their relationships that make up the IT environment. The ServiceNow configuration management process specifically encompasses the definition thus of CMDB classes and attributes, data sources such as Discovery or other, the actual CMDB governance including functional roles and responsibilities as well as interactions with other processes such as change management. Speaking about change management, another ITIL process, it is key for maintaining a successful configuration management process. Unfortunately, it is often very much underestimated or even forgotten about. I might need to cover this in another video, so make sure to subscribe. But uh, put simple, change management is supposed to govern the data management of your CMDB, keeping it as accurate as possible by involving the accountable and responsible stakeholders of the organization. Coming to, back to the topic at hand, uh, it becomes very clear that if the underlying processes are not outlined so that you have the necessary people involved at each step along the way, it should be the very first order of business before considering discovery. 
Consequently, if discovery is implemented without a process to utilize, it certainly does its job from a technical point of view. However, you run the risk that your CMDB will become outdated and cluttered very fast, losing all its value to the organization, that is. Technology is the tools people use to drive their routines, aka processes. These tools are becoming more and more standardized and thus interconnected. This also means that already when choosing between technologies, we have to consider some dependencies. If you only consider dependencies and limitations during an implementation, you're likely to encounter some bad surprises. So let's have a closer look at an organization's technological landscape and how we can leverage the different technologies of ServiceNow's discovery solution. The cloud, or to be more precise, the hybrid cloud model is here to stay and takes an even bigger role in the strategy of IT organizations with each passing year. With that growing demand, there is also the need to manage all these resources. ServiceNow Discovery allows for a cloud inventory of the most common cloud service providers on the market, simply by connecting to the available APIs. There are a few things that are important to know about, though. The list of supported cloud service providers and supported features for each can change with every release. I definitely recommend you to head over to ServiceNow Docs and read about your current as well as future releases. On-premise virtualization environments, such as Citrix vCenter, can also be considered a cloud service provider. Their resources are discovered through APIs. Last but not least, cloud inventory does not return OS-level information, meaning the configuration of the host system running on the virtual machine instance will not be read. We are not writing anything into the CMDB CI computer class hierarchy or its related classes. That is why we need the other discovery technologies. The cloud inventory specifically is capturing the resources the organization owns within the CSP's environment. We want to populate the CMDB with things such as logical data centers, virtual networks, cloud containers, whatever we have in that environment. At the same time, we want to gain insights into what is online and consuming uptime. Cloud inventory is thus the very first step towards cloud management and its governing processes. Agentless discovery, also often referred to as IP-based, horizontal or traditional discovery, uh, requires the deployment of a mid-server application allowing the communication between your ServiceNow instance in the cloud and the resources in your internal network. The midst of application in your network securely communicates with your instance using HTTPS protocol, while well noting that for security reasons, it is always the midst of application initiating communication. This means it is always the midst of application asking your instance in the cloud for tasks it needs to perform next on the local environment. When, for example, in our case, a discovery instruction is received, the mid-server application will communicate with the internal resource on your network using protocols such as WMI, SSH, SNMP, just to name the most common ones. This means the mid-server application sends a command to another resource on the network. Providing the proper accesses are given, the resource will reply to that command. The received information will then be sent back to the instance for processing. Without digressing further into the technicalities of this topic, you can probably now already observe what is important for you to consider. First and foremost, you need to be aligned with security teams. They need to be on board right from the start, otherwise they might see the solution as too intrusive and outright refuse it. Don't worry though, Alex has you covered and has already done a video on this. Check it out, I will link it in the description. Next, you need an overview of the network, so work together with the network team. They should be able to provide uh, you with everything that you need to get started, like IP ranges, VLANs, a topological map of the network, and uh, a good understanding of technical dependencies, such as firewalls. The goal is simple. You want to be able to design your discovery schedule and place your mid-service properly. Keep in mind, though, timing is important, Broadcasting through a network may have an impact on network performance. Plan accordingly. Performance and redundancy requirements towards the mid-servers, they depend entirely on the scale of your discovery implementation. Consider also special cases, such as 
DMZ's high security environments or even requirements towards certifications and regulations. It may be that you cannot use agentless discovery, for example, for core banking environments in the se uh, financial sector. They are usually heavily regulated uh, and the use of IP-based discovery might be considered too intrusive. Uh, that is also why Since a Year Service now offers now agent-based discovery with the Agent Client Collector. Agent Client Collector, short ACC. As the name suggests, a lightweight application that can be deployed on devices to collect information. Interesting enough, the agent does not communicate with the instance directly. It requires accessible mid-servers to send information back to the instance. Have a look at my hands-on video to get a better understanding. Nevertheless, you should consider the following when evaluating agent-based discovery. An agent, for example, cannot be deployed on all devices. There is a list of supported operating systems, meaning devices such as appliances or network equipment cannot be discovered using this technology. If the uh, devices to be discovered with an agent-based technology are Windows hosts and you have Microsoft SCCM, well, an integration with the latter one may just be simpler. The ServiceNow Agent Client Collector is very interesting to consider if you want to use it to monitor the devices using ServiceNow's event management or orchestrator. However, the agent does currently not support service mapping. It's not using patterns, the heart and soul of service mapping. At this point in time, it's unclear how this will be solved. So it will be very interesting to follow upcoming announcements. The agent-based discovery is currently still pretty new to all of us. Only time can tell how well this technology will be adopted. My personal opinion, I love it. Yes, it's still rough around the edges like any newly introduced feature. Nevertheless, the Agent Client Collector framework has a solid underlying architecture that is both scalable and reliable, reliable when set up. Whatever you end up doing, we can agree that it is always good to have a plan and as many insights into the environment as possible beforehand. With this video, you now have the foundational considerations to be made for your discovery implementation to be a success. That said, do not hesitate to reach out to us if you need assistance. We have done this plenty of times. Also, head over to our newly launched research website. We regularly publish new content such as benchmarks, web, uh, white papers, infographics, and much more. The engines of our new research unit have been fired up. The team is eager to provide you with their insights into ITOM and AIOps spaces. So what are you waiting for? And uh, also, while you are at it, hit like on this video, the subscribe button for more. See you next time.